I guess overall, with your tenure in, in WWE, do you ever really feel like you got a fair shake with the company? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> you know, um, when I say yes and no, I mean, you know, I got there on my own accord. I worked my ass off to get there. I got there. I was willing to do anything and everything the company asked of me as long as, you know, it didn't, you know, have me out there in some demeaning you know, lick my ass spot or some upgrade from the kids my ass spot. Who knows? You know, I, mean, I have my right. Uh, I'm not too big of a whore, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, but you know, I, I I think there was definitely a level of maturity that I had not reached yet um, that worked against me because so everything was new to me: the money, the the travel, in the sense of the accelerated travel. Um, and the constant work rate. You know, you're you're literally unpacking your bags just to repack them. You know, when you get home, you don't have time to detox from the road. You don't. The second you start to regain your sense of smell and taste, you're on the road again. So it was a massive adjustment, uh, and I did the best I could. Uh, but, you know, were there things I would have definitely done differently? Absolutely. Uh, with their ways I would have conducted myself differently business-wise? Absolutely. So to put all the blame on them and say, oh, they, they didn't give me a fair shake, or they didn't treat me, you know, with respect or this or that, you could look at it that way. But on the other on the other side of it, you know, there were definitely decisions I think that I could have made differently, which, uh, you know, could have endeared them, you know, or at least let them see me in a more positive light or in a more useful light. Um, you know, I, I'm ashamed that I let myself get discouraged, um, as many times as I did when I was up there, but I think it's just because I just cared so much and I loved it so much and it was not turning out to be the dream that I had had as a little kid. You can't be this way. I can't imagine that this is how it is, but that's how it was for me. You know, it was just a massive wake up call. Uh, and I open her, I'm just sitting here thinking, man, I, I'm not sure I really like these people anymore. You know, I wish I had never met them, and that way I could still maintain that level in my head of these are my heroes. But after I hung out with a good amount of those heroes of mine, I was disgusted. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be their fan anymore. <laughs> you know, um, so call it what you want. You know, maybe I have too much pride. Um, that's always been the knock on Shane Douglas, although I'm sure there's a lot of other knocks, but I'm not saying I patterned my career after him, but it was weird. I was looking at it. I was thinking about it the other day because I was originally scheduled to go up and meet and train with Shane Douglas when I first got into wrestling. That's why I went up to school in Pittsburgh because I was set to train with Shane Douglas. I'd spoken to him on the phone and this and this and this, but he was always a wrestler who I admired. But I always read about, you know, the mistakes that he had made, you know, because he had too much blood and he wasn't a good businessman. And, you know, he, he, he overspoke when he, you know, he maybe should have kept his mouth shut and this and this. And I was thinking about it yesterday. I was like, man, there's a lot of similarities. You know, there's a lot of parallels here where people look at me and think, oh, there's this guy who was, you know, hard to work with, or whatever the perception is, or, you know, he asked questions when he shouldn't have, or, you know, it wasn't, whatever the perceptions are, but I just, it was odd to me. It was, it was odd. You know, I think you need to maintain some level of pride, a high level of pride, but it's a tight wire act too, because too much pride can can burn you, you know. And I'm I'm definitely guilty of that, you know. Where I'm not, I don't want to work for that asshole. He, uh, you know, he screwed me over a couple weeks ago or last year or whatever. No, I'm not working for him. And then my other bookings fall out, and then it's like, oh, I should have taken that. Should have sucked up our pride and worked for them. You know, now I'm out of a booking. You no, know, just shit like that. But um, but yeah, pride gets in the way a lot of times, and um. But at the same time, I'd rather have too much pride than none at all. You know, it's funny. I was just looking at your your notes here, and it says you were released on November seventh, two thousand eight, which is uh, what just a week ago was five years since you departed the company. And I just listened to another interview you were doing. You said you weren't surprised you were released. They really weren't using you. It was kind of surprising that they would even hang on to you and just give you a paycheck. So, you know, when things ended with the company. Uh, what were you told? Uh, were you kind of encouraged to, uh, you know, continue wrestling, you know, stay in contact? Uh, do you think the door is open? And do you ever Absolutely. think uh, th- th- there will be a chance we'll see you in WWE ever again? Uh, absolutely not. 
I, I can't say never because it's such a silly word that, you know, none of us are, you know, it's such an arrogant word, never. How can you know that, you know? Right, so, right. I try I mean, they, could, they, they could have a creative media and somebody says, hey, I got an idea for Paul London. I mean, right. it's effective, but, I mean, you never know. <laughs> so, um, let's throw him 750000 a year. That sounds good. Um, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, my initial, my initial return price was a billion dollars. Uh, well, they're a multi-billion dollar corporation, right? Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I figured. I <laughs> Yeah, the writing was kind of on the wall for the last few years that I was there. I, I felt that there was always kind of an undercurrent that I could go at any time just because I wasn't one of their investments. And that came in varying degrees of you're not as important here as you might think you are. This is us telling you. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, one of the most glaring moments was and I'll get to your question in a second, was um, when they literally removed Brian and I from the video game that we were already put in, um, Vince had us removed from the video game and had crime time inserted into our spot. Now, this is after he had just fired crime time temporarily. So they took people that were currently fired and replaced us in a video game with a tag team that wasn't as over, didn't have near the work rate that we did, but it was just because of personal preference and because he didn't like us. So if something like that doesn't discourage you and make you just want to punch holes in the wall, much less your boss's face, because um, that's a $60,000 paycheck right off the bat, not to mention the residuals from a video game. But that's, that's generally... You're probably not going to get less than $40,000 in one check. Your first check is a lump of 40000 when you get a video game. So when that's taken out of our, you know, out of our hands, just because of personal preference bullshit, make you really start, you know, that anger starts to build. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say. <laughs> so, mind you, for a team that's not even currently employed, um, that's bad. And I think we were the tag champs at the time, so... Oh, nice. Just, just bring your bags of salt because the wounds are right here and there. Just go ahead and cake it in there. Um, but, yeah, when I was released, I had just moved to California, to Los Angeles, to uh, to really heavily pursue my career as an actor. That's part of what was a bit of, a bit of the downfall for me with the entertainers was I realized, hey, you guys aren't going to use me in matches. You guys are never really going to – there I am with that word, never. You guys aren't going to um, invest in me. Uh, see what you're doing with Brian. I'm really happy for him, but you know, where's where's my little bit of cinnamon? You know what I mean? Didn't happen. So I presented uh, Johnny Ace um, with this idea, and I said, "Listen, it's obvious you guys are. You know, I'm not going anywhere. Take advantage of that. And how about I go to film school? You guys can send me to New York Film Academy. They have an eight week or." A, I think a uh, 12-week program, some sort of intensive. Send me to their intensive film school. Let me get a lot of these bare-bones basics on how to be a filmmaker down. I'm already writing. You know, I've been a writer my whole life. My brother's in the film industry. He's a director, producer, writer. Um, send me to film school and let me become your in-house uh, film developer for all the talent. Because at the time, they had put out movies that had tent poles. They thought they could make tent poles out of their talent. You know, if it's seen on the marquee, it doesn't matter if the movie sucks, because it's seen it. If we put, you know, so-and-so on the cover, it wasn't, it, you know, these, it doesn't matter if these movies suck, because they're all just about, you know, trying to make these guys household names. Well, that didn't work either. So I thought, well, you know, let's see. See No Evil is your most successful movie, followed by Condemned. Um... Kane and uh, Stone Cold are marquee guys, so they're kind of already household names in a way, especially Stone Cold. Here's a concept. Why don't you put more than one talent in your films? I'm not saying they all have to be leads or that any of them should be leads, but if you have m known actors, movie stars, or at least uprising stars, but people who are actors, trained actors as your leads, that will get the people in the door. You sprinkle your wrestlers and your talent in smaller supporting roles throughout the film. You know, even if it's just 
Funaki as the hot dog salesman on the corner of Manhattan, you know, or whatever, downtown Manhattan, you know, even if he's just the hot dog vendor, something, you know what I'm saying, cameos. That's how you integrate these guys into the film. You don't give them the whole film to carry on their back because none of them can do it. You give them little bits here and there, almost like small snippets, almost like giving them slight little vignettes for their for whatever character they are. Um, does that make sense to you? I, I think you know. I think that's a good idea because they have WWE Studios. Obviously, they have the talent. I don't know if it's just they don't want to take them off the road. They want to take them off television for. But a lot of the guys who they barely like a Fun when they had Funaki, they barely used the guy. Well, so yeah, why not put him in a movie? Why not? You're, you're paying them anyways, right? Well, put them in little parts. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. don't put the weight of don't put the weight of a whole film on these guys' shoulders. None of them can carry it, obviously, because they ended up taking all their films out of movies and going straight to video. You know, that was their next best thing. Was oh, we can get off the video market. That's who watches our crappy movies, anyways. But either way, they hated the idea. Johnny hated the idea. He was like, "Oh, that's you know, that's the, da, 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 da. and he just you know every excuse you could think of. You know, it's just like. He just didn't like the idea, right? I think it was more so because he just didn't like me. But anyway, I said, screw it. I'm going to do it anyways. So I moved to L.A., and, uh, you know, several months later, he called me up. And I was injured at the time. That was another thing that why they weren't using me is because I was injured. I hurt my back, uh, wrestling Lance Cade. Uh, you know, rest in peace. I miss Lance, too. Um, but I, rest, I wrestled Lance, and I hurt my back really, really bad. And... Um, so they actually released me while I was injured. They asked me to come down to Anaheim, which was about two hours away from where I was living at the time, um, just to drug test me. <laughs> so I said no to that because I thought that was disrespectful. And that that kind of played against me too, I think, because when old raspy voice called me, um, you know, he was like, oh, well, you know, I just don't know if your heart's in it anymore. You know, you're talking about doing movies and this and this. And, uh, you know, you didn't even come down to the TV a couple weeks ago that we had, you know, we a couple hours from you. And it's like, Johnny, you know why I didn't come down. Because it's a witch hunt, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, this and this. You know, they always have excuses, you know. But um, but I knew the writing was on the wall when I wrestled Charlie Haas in Baltimore. And I did a shooting star on to him. And the place erupted. That was I think my last match, actually. Dog match, of course. Um, and I, I came to the gorilla position after the match. The place was still rocking from this finish. And uh, Johnny Ace looks at me and goes, what are you doing? That's Evan Bourne's move. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> Who? <laughs> and he goes, Evan Bourne. I go, that kid's on ECW. This is SmackDown. This is early early to this fall. It's completely different. He goes, well, the people will get confused. And I go, confused? This all in grilled position in front of, like, the office. I'm like, confused? What are you talking about? Like, Van Damme and Guerrero? Like, people get confused and they feuded over the fog splash? No, Johnny, no. He goes, well, just, you can't do it anymore. I just stormed off. I was furious. I was furious. You know, the kid who's just been here for, you know, slightly the time it takes to have a cup of tea already is getting precedent over me who's been here six years, like, that was the ultimate slap in the face, really. Or the most glaring one at that moment. Um, and I like Seidel. He's a buddy of mine. We, we actually grieved together at my house uh, with Jimmy Yang Wang when the Ben Watkins went down because they canceled SmackDown. And they released us all to go watch separate ways for the day. And then they said, you can come back Tuesday for a live SmackDown taping. And we're going to, it's all voluntary. And none of us, you know, we ended up not going. But, yeah, I actually really liked Seidel. It was he uh, and Jimmy and Wang and myself we went back up to my house and just kind of tried to wrap our heads around everything. Um, but either way, that was that was the, that was was the kind of the end for me at WWE because, uh, I explained that to Johnny when he released, and I said, well, you know, you're sitting here telling me I can't do this move, and he's like, oh, well, you know, everyone there is such a coward that it's always, well, that's coming from this person, not from me. You know what I mean? No one can ever take any responsibility for anything there, anything. It's always, oh, well, this is, uh, oh, that's what's, this is coming from so-and-so. It's coming from the boss. It's coming, you know what I mean, or whatever it is. And, um... Pass the buck. No, it's, it's, it's... Right? It's pathetic how afraid these guys are of this guy. 